we're back. I'm back again with Rebecca the Fantastic. Rebecca the Fantastic from Needlepoint Joint in Ogden, Utah. Yay. We okay. were just there. I was just there. It was so much fun. While I was there, I spent lots of money on yarn for our next knit along project. My whole group did. <laughs> so because we kind of wiped out Needlepoint Joint's inventory, now people have to pre-order. <laughs> Yay! It's it's real empty, real empty. <laughs> but we're excited because we're going to do a fantastic color work sweater for our next knit along. So I'm going to show you a sleeve. Yay! Nicole. I've started. This is okay. We're going to apologize right away if we're not saying this correctly. Do you want to try it, or should I do it? Oh, it's all you, girl. <laughs> okay. In my ig ignorance, I at first was calling it the Maja, Maja cardigan, M-A-J-A. -A. I'll put the title down below. But if we think because it's Scandinavian and or Icelandic that it's probably Maya cardigan. I don't know. My apologies to the designer, Helena Magnuson. Helene, Helene, we think it's Helena. So we're trying. I'm sorry if we're butchering both the name of your pattern and your name. I apologize. My Swedish and Icelandic are terrible in that I know yo lopey yarn and like some Swedish dishes and stuff at Ikea. I, I got that. Yarbo. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've just watched Vikings on TV. That's all. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I know about York. I got York. That. It's a fantastic colorwork sweater pattern. We're super excited, and we're going to talk all about the kits that you can get from Needlepoint Joint. And it's four colors, worsted weight, so it'll knit up relatively quickly. And then we're going to steek it. Yay! The first steek is always the worst steek. Well, actually, by the so time people by the time people get to sticking this sweater, if they're following along with the channel, we're gonna do a little practice piece to practice before we actually cut the sweater. We will practice. We'll have a warm up, is what I'm saying. Good. I I did not warm up for my first steak unless by warming up you counted bourbon. Oh, that we could do that. That's how I warmed up for my first steak. So it worked out fine. Worked out fine. And which sweater was your first steak? It was a, oh gosh, I don't, it was so long ago. It was um, like a knit picks pattern out of their Andean silk. Oh, okay. because if I'm going to steak, why not steak with an alpaca silk blend? Why not? Seems like a totally reasonable thing to do, especially when I have perfectly good wool sitting there. Said with much so, sarcasm for your newer knitters, you do not want to do that first. Try not to do that. Actually, it wasn't bad. It really wasn't as slippy as you think because stitches don't want to come apart when yeah. you go up those columns. They don't, I mean, knitting does not unravel sideways. It doesn't. No. It'll be fine. And we're going to reinforce the stick properly to begin with anyway. Yeah, yeah, it'll all be fine. So go look up the pattern, four colors, Rebecca and friends at Needlepoint Joint have put together four colorway options for you to pre-order. So show us. So apologies for the lighting. It is a very dark day here in Ogden. It is not normal. So, so we went ahead and created some colorways um, and we dedicated them to Wyoming where Jana is from. And we wanted to kind of stay true to some of the things that you would see in sort of a more rustic sweater, but we know that not everybody likes the original colorway. A lot of people do, but not everyone. So we started out with a kind of an ode to the original colorway. So it's got that, you know, kind of bright blue in the middle and then the white and rusty and the bright blue. So do you have the pattern, the do you have the pattern there? I do. Yeah. Just pop that up. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, and you can see I like this little detail picture. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty. Yeah, so you can see there's that really 
pretty pop of blue on kind of a more traditional color palette background. Yeah. So we went ahead and put together this color, which we're calling Cheyenne. And it is a heathery denim blue yeah. for that center band. Mm -hmm. This oatmeal color for the background of your color work, okay. your button bands, and uh, your color work are in this rusty kind of this rusty kind of brown. Yeah, that's and that's dark. That's beautiful. Yeah. Your pop of color is going to be this beautiful heathery robin's egg blue. And that's showing up really well, actually, as you're holding it about there. That's showing up really well. Yeah. yeah. The rusty isn't, it's it's really a pretty kind of a rusty, chocolatey. Yeah. It's, it's not as bright as color. the original, but it is a beautiful color, especially contrasted against these blues. Yeah. So this is Cheyenne. And so if you want something really close to that original colorway, this is, this is That's your buddy. One. That's the one for you. That's the one. So then we decided to go. So um, Jana had picked one out that was kind of, a, it was similar to the original one, but it was just enough different. It kind of gave it that modern kind of edge to it. Um, and this is the one we're calling the glacier and kind of the reason why is it's got this beautiful teal color in it. And I believe the glacier is going to be that middle color. So it's going to have that beautiful tealy, like real. Yeah. It's kind of going to be your main color. It looks a little dark on your screen, but on, it's, it's my, on my screen, I don't, I don't know. It's, I forget what it's called. Something like A, G, and C. Yeah, it's called A, G, and C. And it's this beautiful tealy green blue. Mm -hmm. And it's just, yeah. yeah this it, is I actually mean, what think, I'm working on here. Yeah. If you think about it, like a deep glacier color. Yeah. That's what you're, that's what you're getting. And then there's a, a beautiful white. Uh -huh. This, oof, I'm losing them. Um, this is kind of a heathery brown color, like a yeah, it's pale almost heathery a, brown. Yeah, it's a light. Yeah, I, I really like that. Yeah it's, like a, yeah, it's got a lot of depth to it. Yeah. And then this is like a chestnut brown, which isn't showing up as well on mine, but it's a really beautiful chestnut brown. And it's got just a little bit of red in it, a little bit of flecks of red. But you so have that darker, that darker contrast for the button band, the collar, the cuffs. Yeah. Yeah. And it actually like kind of sets off that it gives a beautiful contrast to that, to that AGNC. It's really pretty. So nice. So that one is called Glacier. That's the name of the kit that you'll look for. If you like the that name of the kit is Glacier. Mm -hmm. The next one, we wanted to go a little bit more romantic, something just a little bit softer. Yeah. So this one is called Desert Rose. Nice. And this is a really pretty, it's a white, uh -huh. a really beautiful wine burgundy. Again, not showing up so well on my camera because it's oh, dark. There, see? There you go. Jana's got a good representation. Right. There's a heathery, lavendery pink, Yep. which is lots of depth in it as well. There's lots of uh, kind of darker undertones than the pale heather and then a pale heathery gray right. and it turns out super dramatic should i, I mean, show my swatch you are a woman of mystery when you're wearing this now yeah, i am it. knitting this colorway for my daughter and i have swatched this one so pretend this is your arm this is your sleeve or this would be the body color and then here's the rest of the swatch here and then this this beautiful gray i love a good gray would is the button band and the the cuff you know, button band in the collar. So I am loving that. Yeah. And I love the contrast between these two, because this is a really rich whiny color. Yeah. And then this is just, it's just a beautiful neutral gray. So you'll so be able this to pair is it called, with a lot. This is called desert rose. Okay. Okay. And this is much prettier than the red desert in the middle of Wyoming that you drive through on I-80 and you're like, eh. It is, but you know, 
I was looking at native flowers to Wyoming and there's a ton of them that there are those beautiful mauve yeah. with those beautiful burgundy. We have a lot of pretty flowers in the desert. It's true. You just don't see them when you're screaming past on I-80. So maybe the moral no. of the story is take the side roads and relax and look at yeah. the flowers because it, it is beautiful. Yeah. Especially after a good rain in the spring. Yeah. So our last color is Laramie, and this is going to be a little bit warmer, a little bit more rustic. Um, this is for your earthy, crunchy kind of, you know, this is definitely for an earthy kind of. So it's that chestnut brown again, and we've paired it against an oatmeal and this beautiful gold color. And it's got mm -hmm. these like red undertones that when you're looking at red rock, as you scream past on I-80, that mm -hmm. color is there and it's gorgeous. Yeah. And then there's this beautiful sagey kind of mossy green, but it's a little bit brighter. It's um, got just like a little bit of lime in it. It's, mm -hmm. but it's got those gold undertones. I mean, the whole thing, it just, it, it makes you think of screaming down the desert at, on I-80, but it works together so beautifully because those those vistas can be amazing. And to me, that makes me feel like I'm walking in my pasture in the spring and the sage is there. And then you have the, you know, the little flowers that first pop up. And I'm actually, I don't have a swatch of that because the Kate you're holding in your hand is actually coming to me tomorrow. Yeah, it's actually, it, it makes me think right now of walking in the, in the foothills here in our mountains right now. There's yeah. still that sagey green the, and those beautiful gold leaves you guys came right in time to see all the leaves it was changing. beautiful it was just lovely so i have obviously i have swatches going on i'm going to be knitting several of these for family members i'm probably going to knit the laramie kit that you just held up for myself at some point so yay and i'm happy that it's worsted weight because my kids are smaller than me so i'll get theirs knocked out first <laughs> yeah well and it's just, I mean, it's just kind of nice to be able to kind of breeze through a sweater. And that way, when you get to the hard part, it's like, you know what? It's fine. It's, it's fine. Satisfying. It wasn't. This is so satisfying. I mean, I think I knit this swatch in just a couple hours. It was really satisfying. Yeah, it goes yeah. pretty quick. And I'm not fast. I'm not a fast knitter. Worst but, weight color work is amazing. By the way, this is the speed swatch. I recommend people do that. So I'm just, I'm not purling. I'm knitting round and round. And on the backside, I just carried the colors across. So it's messy, but I'm going to probably, you know, take it out. Even if I've blocked it, I'll still take it out if I need to use it. Um, but so I have a video about speed swatching and swatching is important because then you can see for sure how the colors are going to go together what you want to have for the cuff, what you want to have in the middle. You need to swatch, obviously for gauge, right? Duh. Really, surely, talking to you. <laughs> yeah, Shirley, come on. Oh, I love you, Shirley. You know I do, and you're a good sport. So if you're watching this, but Shirley is one of my knitters who groans about swatching, but it's important because then what you have in your mind, it might not come out the way you you think you might not be visualizing it the way it's really going to be so i swatched this several different ways before and sent my daughter pictures at school before we decided like i had um the greenish i had traded i had traded around the light color here this light brown tan i had traded that with the leaves here we had swapped to see what we liked better and it was important to do that. And then, you know, what if I wanted this to be the button band and this to be the body? I mean, it's important to swatch it and see. Well, and it's really important because sometimes you'll think colors are going to work well together mm -hmm. and then you put them together and they disappear against each other. Yeah. Um, so like if you were to take this gray and this pinky color, yeah. I and mean, you can see when you put those together, I mean, they're beautiful next to each other, but if right. you put these together in color work, you wouldn't see them. Look how similar um, that is to what you're wearing. It is exactly similar. I, I guess I'm feeling this right now because I don't know. However, if you have small motifs of that, it's going to wash out. You know, you're wearing that and it looks lovely on you, but you have larger blocks of color. They're not little... Right 
you know, little leaves, you know? Yeah. I've got the mauve dress. I've got a big cozy gray sweater because it's freezing today. Um, yeah. Even if you put it next to the white, it, these two are still going to blend right. together. And so sometimes right. you'll think you're really happy with the color. And if you don't swatch it, you start your sweater. And well, then you we did that. And I thought, I thought I wanted to have the body be the gray, but when we held that up, it totally just made everything look really bland. And we needed this richness of this to pull out the pink here and the pink here. Yeah. So yeah, it's important. Swatch, Shirley, swatch. <laughs> oh, she knows I'm just teasing. <laughs> we love Shirley. So um, yeah, I, I had a friend, who, a very dear friend who actually like she designed but she refused to swatch and every sweater she made, she gave away. And so finally one day I knit her a sweater and she's like, oh, it's beautiful and it fits beautifully. And I said, yes, I swatched. And if looks could kill, <laughs> I've right. been buried in the pasture. <laughs> yeah. So I was perfect. talking, um, I was talking with uh, Wilma Malcolmson, you know, the on Shetland, the Farrell designer, and she keeps her swatches. So for example, this is a swatch I did for a Farrell hat and, you know, and then I did cut it and I blocked it and, but she keeps them and she like pins them up on her bulletin board and puts a little label of what it is, what colorways she used. And that's how she remembers what she did for each thing. I mean, I'm not a designer, but now it's a coaster. <laughs> And it's a good way to go back if you're like oh I liked these colors together or yeah. I think I want to put these colors together again you can see how they work now if I'm not going to cut this because I may or may not need the yarn but the point is I can see the colors you'll want you know you need to, to do this for gauge and ideally you're going to block it before you measure your gauge as well but still I would rip it out and use it even after it's blocked if I if you're running that short of yarn I would absolutely do that I do that. Yeah. So yeah, it's like a savings account of yarn. <laughs> yeah. It's your insurance but at the very policy. least, at the very least, I will take a photo of it. I'll write down the color numbers. I'll put it in my knitting journal because then I'll remember what I did. Because I won't remember. Are you kidding? I can't remember what I had for breakfast, much less. Yeah. I like to, when I, you know, I've got my pattern in my little sleeve. When I get done, I'll just tuck my swatch right inside. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So and let's then I talk probably about promptly lose the pattern. So, you know, so let's talk about the pattern um, because it's an Icelandic designer and a European or a Swedish company. Um, the measurements are in centimeters, but Hey, we're knitters. We can do math. And we have Google. <laughs> we have conversions, but you know what, if you're not a Googler and you don't have a metric conversion on your phone, Here's what you do. You measure yourself, right? You measure your bust measurement around the widest part of you wearing the support, most supportive bra that you have. You measure yourself. Then you take your inches times 2.5 because there's two and a half centimeters in an inch. Then you figure out, well, do you want a couple of inches positive ease? I do. I want to be able to wear a worsted weight cardigan over, you know, a, a T or a turtleneck. Do people still wear turtlenecks? I don't know. It's so seventies. You know. It'll all come back. The point is you want to layer it. Maybe I'm going to put it over my, my thermals. Cause you know, Wyoming is kind of like Iceland, Iceland. It's freaking windy and cold and there's no trees. I mean, in this corner of the state, <laughs> it's not, I don't live where it's pretty like Jackson or Cody. I don't live there. I live in the like windy, snowy, cold section. Anyway, so I'm going to want a couple, two, three, four, whatever inches of positive ease. And then that just means extra girth, right? Right. Hey, it gets extra room. So do the math. So you want to take your, take what I actually did to start with was I looked at the pattern and I looked at like the size large and I took that centimeters whatever that is. So if we took 120.5, now a comma is like a decimal on this pattern. We'll just note that. So I took 120.5 and divided by 2.5. And what do we get? I have a calculator. 
let's see, 120.5 divided by 2.5 would be a bust measurement of 48.2 inches. So if I have, a, you know, maybe that works for me. It depends on what size you want to. I think that's what I decided for myself. I'm not sure. After, I, I, yeah, and I would say on those decimals, don't get too hung up on it. No. Yeah. I mean, if you're at 0. 0.4 or 0. 0.7, it's half an inch either way. It's not the end of the world. No. I mean, just basic rounding. You know, we've got one that's, we've done all, all of this math and there's one size that came up to 52.8. So I would just consider that a 53. Yeah. Right. It's not hard. You can do it. You can do it. And if you need help, drop a comment down below. Join me over in the Ravelry or the Facebook group and we'll help you. And we do have the conversions for these sizes listed with the kits. Perfect. And so if you, you want to cheat. You also, you also, when you ship the kits, you will say, this is yarn A, this is yarn B, this is yarn C. So we Correct. will include a card that says which which color goes in which place. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Is there anything else we need to tell people besides swatch, swatch, swatch when you get your kit? Oh, pre-orders close. Pre-orders begin now. Pre-orders close. They begin now. They're available on the website. Um, they close on October 24th. And this is a hard close. Um, the reason why is with shipping and supply chain issues in the world. I've talked to our representative with Plymouth Yarns. They're confident that they can fill these orders. Good. Um, but after that, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen in the world. Mills have shut down. There are ships outside of Long, I or, uh, right. Long Beach as far as the eye can see. Right. So we can't guarantee when that yarn will be back in stock. But so, they are telling you they have the yarn in the Plymouth warehouse. Now we're pretty, we're are, pretty much sure we're going to be good to go for right now. But, we've talked to them and they are 100% yeah. confident. But we're closing pre-orders at 1159 Mountain Time, October 24th, because we need time. Rebecca needs time to get your orders collated, get all the things ordered from her distributor and then get everything there pack up your orders, put a smiley face and mail them off to you so that we can all cast on together on Black Friday. Yay. So yeah, I hate shopping. I don't want to shop. I don't do Black Friday. I'm going to stay home and knit. And I want people to stay home and knit with me. It is way more fun to knit. In fact, at the shop each year, we do, we typically, well, you know, COVID, um, but typically we do something called Black Sheep Friday where instead of going and shopping, we all just come in and hang out and knit. Yay. And it is way more fun. Yeah. So we're going to have the cast on video go live on Black Friday. Hooray. So pre-orders end at 1159 Mountain Time, Mountain Time, October 24th, so that you can have your kit in time to cast on with me Thanksgiving weekend. Hooray. Eat yeah. leftovers. If you do Thanksgiving, eat leftovers and knit. What a fantastic way to spend Thanksgiving weekend. It's, well, I mean, if you're like me, I can't move the next day anyway, because I'm still stuffed with leftovers. I have to roll myself to my knitting spot. So I'm excited. Fine. I'm excited. And just know that on October 25th, I will be rolling myself in here in my pajamas with a lot of coffee and getting all of your orders processed and on the way. So that's the deal with that. So start pre-ordering. There'll be a link down below in the video description where you can go and use my affiliate link, please and thank you. And then you can view your options. If you have any questions, as always, call us. We're happy to help you. Um, there will be pictures of the swatches and pictures of the original sweater. Um, and I'll try and get pick some better pictures when it's not pouring rain and practically midnight outside of the skeins put together so that you can really see them so and once I the uh, swatch for the Laramie colorway once I have that in hand I will need a swatch for that and I'll post it watch my Instagram um I'll send it to you if you want to pop it on the website if you don't that's okay but oh, people yeah. can watch my I'll I'll put it on my social media as well 
Yeah, so, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll I'll do a swatch as soon as I I as soon as you send it to me. Okay. It's on its way. It's on its way. Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow, because I needed this to show it to you because gals, it was so good to see you. It's it's empty in here until it we, comes back. <laughs> we went, we it was a yarn haul. It was a haul. I was at Needlepoint Joint. It was a blast with nine other of my knitter friends and we had a yarn store party and it was so much fun so that's what we do at pearl together retreats we go to ogden and we go shopping and we knit lots of things and it was so much fun so you'll have to plan to join me sometime it was fun to see rebecca in person and everybody at needlepoint joint we okay. have we so look forward to it looking forward to getting everybody ready to cast on so that's going to be the best black friday ever right and you might have to make one too i may have to make one but i mean think about spending the depths of the winter in this cozy cozy sweater so it's going to be a fun learning uh one thing i want to say about the pattern it is knitted from the bottom up you start with the sleeves so lots of people want to just knit a swatch for the sleeve or call the sleeve their swatch. And you can, you can, but I still think swatching for the sake of swatching is important. Because well, it's kind of a gamble, right? Because I mean, what if you wash it and then it doesn't fit right? And now you're stuck on doing a full sleeve. So swatch. Anyway, the pattern is knitted from the bottom up. You start with the sleeves, then you knit the body up and then you join and then you knit the yoke to the top. So it's oh, really fun to knit that way. And then we cut it, but not to worry. We'll warm up with, we'll warm up on that. Don't worry. I've got a plan for that. Okay. All right. Links are all down below. Thanks so much for joining me, Rebecca, as always. <laughs> It's so always nice to see you, Jana. Thanks. Let us know if you have any questions. Bye.